Welcome, everyone. We're so excited to talk to you today about the Master of Global Management and Healthcare Services. Um, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please go ahead and list your questions in the Q&A box located in the bottom of your screen, and we will address those at the end of the webinar. Next slide, please. Okay, right. I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, our panelists today. Um, myself, I'm Alicia Bach. I'm the program manager at the Thunderbird School of Global Management, and I'll be your main point of contact um, while you're a student here at Thunderbird from the time that you submit your application all the way through graduation. Um, I'm also joined by my colleagues at Dignity Health Global Education, Lindsay Granger and Lena Artinian. They are the enrollment managers, um, and you'll be working with them as while you're working on getting your application ready. And we finally, we also have Adriana Rodriguez. She is um, a current MGM student. She was actually our first applicant um, and student to join the program, and she will be um, speaking with us later on in the session. Next slide, please. All right. So Thunderbird's vision is a world with sustainable and equitable prosperity, and our mission is to educate global leaders and managers who will maximize the benefits of the fourth industrial revolution. We consider ourselves the vanguard of global leadership, management, and business education, and we aim to prepare, empower, and influence our students to be future-ready leaders with a 21st century digital global mindset. Next slide, please. All right, so a little bit about us. For the past 75 years, Thunderbird has always believed in bringing the world together with a global mindset. Thunderbird was founded in 1946 in Glendale, Arizona on a World War II Air Force base where pilots from around the globe came to train. Then in the 70s, the school became the first higher education institution to focus exclusively on international management with a hands-on real-world training approach to training. And then in the 90s, we launched executive programs and online programs located in Moscow, Geneva, and other countries around the globe. And we currently have um, multiple hubs all across the globe as well. Um, next slide, please. Then in 2015, bringing us into current times, uh, Thunderbird became an independent unit and the 16th college at Arizona State University, combining Thunderbird's multi-decade heritage of developing global business leaders with ASU's expansive resources. The move brought the number one ranked masters in management under the umbrella of the number one ranked school for innovation. Next slide, please. As a Thunderbird graduate, you will have a lifelong connection to other alumni and the school. Being a Thunderbird will change your career, your mindset, and global breadth of your network. With 46,000 alumni from around the globe, wherever you are, you will find local T-Birds ready to help tackle your business and cultural challenges. There are opportunities to connect with other T-Birds by joining a local chapter for networking events, alumni reunions, or professional development webinars. Alumni events are held on a monthly basis around the globe and online. Once you're an enrolled student, um, you will have access to T-Bird Connect, where you'll receive um, event updates for um, current students and alumni and have the opportunity to join a local chapter. Um, one example um, of a event that's coming up. We have our 75th anniversary coming up in early November. And so for more information on that, please visit the website that we're going to post in the chat box. And you can select the pre-registration tab to sign up for more updates on that. Uh, next slide, please. All right, and now I'm going to hand things over to Lindsay, our Senior Manager of Enrollment with Dignity, Glo Dignity Health Global Education. Thanks, Alicia. It's a mouthful, I know. Uh, <laughs> and thank you for that great overview of Thunderbird and its impressive history and uh, alumni networks. So like Alicia said, my name is Lindsay, and I'm the Senior Manager of Enrollment with Dignity Health uh, Global Education. And I've been lucky enough to work with Alicia for about the last year and a half uh, on this amazing MGM and healthcare services program. So Dignity Health Global Education, or DHGE, which is much easier to say, uh, have partnered with Thunderbird School of Global Management and Edson College to create this healthcare specialization of their already existing number one ranked masters of management in the world. And so what we've done is combined healthcare innovation, global management, and an entrepreneurial mindset to create a curriculum that teaches skills in cross-cultural dynamics and negotiations, 
um, global leadership and data-driven decision-making. So united by a large passion for innovation and transforming healthcare, our graduates are the leaders uh, who will eventually bring this new form of healthcare into the future. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next slide. Uh, so I'm sure you've all heard of MBAs and MHAs, but what exactly is an MGM? And what makes this one so unique? So the Master of Global Management and Healthcare Services, it's a top tier management degree that's been tailored to uh, the modern healthcare industry and combines elements of Thunderbird's already existing renowned curriculum with insights from the DHGE network um, of healthcare professionals. And so this degree program was designed for remote learners uh, and features cutting edge learning technologies, platforms and content that is hosted 100% online. So having said that, it's, it's more of an experience than just learning in the classroom. Um, and like Alicia mentioned before, you get so many networking opportunities, not only with your peers, but with the faculty members and other Thunderbird alumni during your time as a student and then also upon graduation. So the MGM focuses on international business and the diversification of global supply chains, all while having a massive emphasis on fostering innovation throughout the program. And this online master's degree goes way beyond a traditional MBA or MHA by delivering true tested healthcare management strategies and cutting edge healthcare expertise um, not only from the faculty, but also from subject matter experts that are brought in um, during the course of the program. And graduates of the MGM and healthcare services are prepared to transform healthcare organizations of any size and take them into the future. Next slide, please. So this is a tough question and one that both um, Alicia and I have been asked many times over the, the last couple of years. Um, and so I guess one way to just describe it in a nutshell is that the program is designed for motivated, innovative healthcare professionals who are really looking to gain global perspectives on healthcare and develop innovative solutions for pressing health issues. Um, and I think the main thing to remember here is, especially in light of COVID and everything that's happened in the last year and a half, is that borders and national identities don't confine healthcare anymore at all. And so to succeed in this increasingly global landscape, healthcare needs leaders who can nurture both domestic and international relationships, diversify their supply chain and business practices, and develop innovative solutions for contemporary healthcare needs. So again, in, in a nutshell, this program is perfect for individuals who want to lead the way in transforming healthcare. And you know, from next level networking to building innovative strategies among a community of leaders, uh, the lessons that our students are taught in this program will, will benefit um, them in their future careers and beyond. So you know, the legacies that they're leaving for their current organizations and future organizations. Uh, so here are some examples of uh, the, the organizations and the job titles that our current students have. Um, and as you can see, our students have a diverse range. And, um, you know, they include directors, analysts, managers and sales managers, and physicians. And don't be afraid if your organization or your job title is not in this box. These are just simply examples. Um, and I've had my share of classmates and cohorts over the years through my own academic experiences. And frankly, there's nothing worse than being in a homogeneous cohort where most of your peers have similar job roles, similar experiences, give similar advice. You all just kind of stay laterally. So I think one of the really cool benefits of this program is that you'll be surrounded by peers who come from a, a large variety of backgrounds. Um, and experiences all, of course, related to healthcare. And those are not only going to enrich your student experience, but allow for, again, amazing networking opportunities once you graduate. 
So having said all of that, I'm going to hand things over to my other wonderful colleague, Lena, who is DHGE's program advisor for the MGM and Healthcare Services. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Hello, everyone. As Lindsay mentioned, my name is Lena, and I'm the program advisor here at DHGE for this amazing MGM and Healthcare Services program. I'm going to be spending the next few slides going over the structure, content, faculty, and admissions requirements. So with a history of global focus and constant innovation, Thunderbird is uniquely positioned to help healthcare leaders not only to navigate the world currently, but to excel in future trends. So the program explores relevant topics such as global business environments, global management strategy, healthcare policy and innovation, leading digital and data decision making. So I'll go over each of these bubbles and details in the next few slides, uh, but the program is made up of 49 credits, two practicums and personal development capstones. And although it's an online program, you absolutely do get the cohort uh, feeling along with a set of office hours, which each week with the course faculty. Next slide, please. So I'm going to go over the full course guide and, um, and the descriptions will be posted on our website, but really, um, again, it's 43 credit hours and the six credit hours that you'll be taking are part of the practicum. So here's a list of the courses. There's healthcare innovation, global accounting, health administration and management, uh, financial value creation for leaders, digital and data decision making, global leadership, personal development, global marketing and strategy, and international communication and negotiation. So if we could jump to the next slide, thank you. Uh, now, what's easily the most unique aspect of this program are the practicum proportions. Throughout the program, students will benefit from two applied project practicums. These practicums are, are sprint style, consulting um, opportunities where students work with small teams under faculty guidance to identify analyze and solve real problems for real world clients in the healthcare industry. Clients may include healthcare related companies at various stages in the business cycle from all over North America, such as participants in the Mayo Clinic, ASU MedTech Accelerator, who are looking to solve specific business problems, such as launching a product in new market or raising their next round of financing. So the practicum sprints culminate in the presentation of student, student determined strategic or personal solutions to the client. We can jump next to the slide, please. Okay, so now I'd like to introduce you to our esteemed lead faculty. So we have Dr. Gibbons, who is the academic director for the MGM in, the, in healthcare services program. And he will be your primary faculty member who you will be conversing with. Then we have Dr. Hansacker, who is the Associate Dean of the Innovation with, with Thunderbird. And lastly, Dr. Hall, who is the Senior Director and Clinical Professor at Edson College of Nursing and Health Innovation. We are incredibly fortunate to have these three pioneers involved in the MGM um, HS program. Next slide. Wonderful, thank you. We also have uh, quite the roster of impressive faculty members who, who you will have the pleasure to, to learn from. And also feel free to go on our website to look up their biography and the details. Again, if you have any questions about them, you can reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to answer them. Next slide, please. Okay. So here is a sample course path that you will follow for the August 2021 intake, which will be fall of this year. So fall and spring classes last for seven and a half weeks, while summer classes are six weeks. So the applied learning practicums are one week in length, and the exact dates of those practicums are outlined in the academic calendar, so you can plan accordingly. Now, I'm going to hand things over to Alicia to introduce our fabulous guest speaker, Adriana. Thank you, Lena. 
Um, so it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Adriana Rodriguez and welcome her as our guest speaker today on our webinar. Adriana was not only the first student to ever be accepted into the MGM in healthcare services, but she's also an employee of Common Spirit Health. So welcome, Adriana. We're so glad to have you here today. And I'd like to start by asking if you can tell our audience a bit about yourself professionally, and then I'll go ahead and get into some specific questions for you about your experience in the program so far. So, Adriana, I think you're on mute. I guess I think we have a technical difficulty. Apologies. Well, it looks like our internet's uh, frozen. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm going to go off video um, because that seems to be taking up some bandwidth. I probably should have waited until uh, we were speaking. But um, thank you so much for, for having me. Um, the, I missed your first question, Alicia. Oh, sure. So I was just going to um, have you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself professionally, and then I'll go ahead and get into some other specific questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so currently, I am, my title is Program Manager slash uh, Chief of Staff for the Digital Human Connected Experiences team uh, here at Common Spirit. Um, I uh, work directly with um, the VP of this area and uh, support essentially everything uh, in his tower, which represents um, development of uh, new products, new um, our uh, mobile application for our, our patients to log in, um, uh, websites, everything really um, uh, platform related to, to the digital space. Um, Prior to that, I worked for several years um, in the uh, enterprise application architecture team where I was a manager of integration. Um, and even before that, I worked in radiology and cardiology. I was a PAX administrator, did lots of different things. So for the last uh, 20 plus years, I've been in healthcare in various different areas on the last about 15 in IT. Great. Thanks so much uh, for giving us an overview. And so how about, let's talk about the, the, your program experience so far. So, so far, how has the online learning experience been? It's been really great. Um, one, I, you know, I've been fortunate to work with Dignity Health slash Common Spirit for the last several years, and I have been fully remote uh, even before COVID and it became, you know, cool to do. But um, so the learning environment being online is very, very conducive to my lifestyle. Um, I have a very demanding job. I have two little kids. I have a husband. I have lots of different things going on. So, um, you know, before I uh, registered for this course, I was really concerned with being able to do it all right, do it all at the same time. And I've been pleasantly surprised that, you know, the coursework is manageable, it's relevant, and I've enjoyed each of my classes and, and especially the, the peers in my cohort. Excellent, well, I'm glad to hear that, it, hear that. Um, um, yeah, that's the, the whole goal of the program. We definitely wanna make it um, as manageable as possible for our graduate students. Uh, so why do you think people should join this program? So. Um, this is, it's such a broad area uh, of, of um, education. It's very intriguing because, you know, you go through, we've had, thus far, I've had about five classes. So uh, one of the best ones I've had so far was navigating global and regional business environments. And it was so uh, intriguing and eye-opening to me because one, we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? And so there's, um, you know, that's super uh, relevant to the globalization of healthcare. Um, and uh, so we, we did a lot of studies on that. Um, and I think that uh, folks that are interested in taking uh, a master's program or working in a master's program, I think gaining the necessary insights to navigate business and personal relationships on a global level is really um, something that is required of leaders because we, uh, no matter what industry we're in, there will be some sort of global component 
and really to be able to understand um, and communicate well and negotiate well, it's, it's very um, key. Great. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, so what has been your favorite part of the program? So well, I guess you talked about the class, but other than the one class, what's been your favorite part of the program so far? So I love to learn. So I, I'm, you know, total nerd, but I, um, it, it's all very exciting to me. I would say thus far, the, my favorite part has been just learning and hearing the different perspectives from my cohort. Um, because like I mentioned before, I've been in healthcare for a long time, but it's been very, you know, specific areas and, um, there's no one else that is in the IT for the healthcare space, uh, currently in my cohort. So there's folks that have, you know, have, um, uh, um, jobs in the payer sector, in the medical device sector, um, and, uh, like the consumer patient experience. And so it's been helpful for me to sort of just understand each of the different viewpoints and also kind of help them understand from my perspective. So that's been really nice. And I think that goes along with what Lindsay said about, um, you know, you just don't want the homogenous group, right. Where you're just all like agreeing with one another. It's nice to be able to, uh, to hear and, and expand your viewpoint. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, and we have students from that are in all different levels of their career. Like there are um, some mid-level and senior level um, students. So you'll find a, a very broad range of experiences, um, which, and everyone can learn from one another, which is I think really helpful. Um, let's see the next question. So what aspects of the program have already had an impact on your career? So one, I would say the most impactful um, has been the global marketing strategy course um, and specifically around products or solutions. And as I mentioned in the digital space, um, you know, we, we create products or solutions for our patients. So there are times that we buy solutions or that we buy and build and bring something together, but a lot of what we do right now is, um, you know, it's innovative and it's it's figuring out who our customer is. And we all know our customer is our patient, but we also have customers which are our providers, our other caretakers, and how do we position um, now that we are common spirit, how do we position our tools that um, span nationally versus very regional where we used to focus <clears throat> um, from a, excuse me, <clears throat> digital, uh, dignity health perspective, where we are very focused on a specific, you know, three states. And now we have many states and lots of different use cases and, and, you know, geographical areas that, um, have just different needs. And so understanding marketing and positioning and, and, um, the, the branding aspects is, is really interesting and relevant to my career now. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adriana, for um, the helpful insights into your experience. Uh, so if anyone has any other um, questions, please go ahead and put them in the Q&A. And uh, we'll go ahead, like I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and address all your, all your questions at the end of the webinar. So um, thank you so much for your time, Adriana. And now I'm going to go ahead and hand things back over to Lena. Thanks again. All right. So now we're going to get to the finer details of the, of the um, application process. So um, what I wanted to do, we talked about the concentration for uh, the program, but what I wanted to do is just go over the, the cost and, and, and how it works. As you can see, the program cost is $70,000 and uh, per credit hour, we're looking at $1,428. There obviously is an application fee of $70 for domestic applicants and $115 for international applicants. Um, there is a program, program deposit of $500. So this deposit confirms your acceptance into, into the program and reserves a seat for, seat for you uh, in the upcoming cohort and allows you to register for your first term courses. And obviously uh, the deposit funds are, are go, is going to be applied towards your tuition. We also have designated account managers to help with your 
student loans and your FAFSA applications as well. Now, if we could jump to the next slide. So here's a bit of exciting news. We are incredibly pleased to offer a variety of scholarships for the August 2021 intake for the MGM and healthcare services. As mentioned earlier, our students come from dynamic backgrounds and therefore we wanted to offer dynamic scholarships to healthcare innovators, physicians and nurse leaders, and of course, anyone who has previously taken uh, a Dignity Health uh, Global Education Program in the past. So we do have uh, 15 spots um, available for um, healthcare innovator at $15,000 each scholarship, another 15 spots for nurse innovator, again at $15,000, and 10 spots for international healthcare leadership. And of course, um, there is a $10,000 scholarship and that is open to all Dignity Health Global Education alumni. If we can jump to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, here are the admissions requirements. Um, and, and this is standard. You need your um, undergraduate degree from an accredited university, um, competitive TOEFL, IELTS, or PTE scores if you did not graduate from an English speaking university in a native English speaking country. Um, the submission of an online application, including an updated resume documenting your professional and your academic history, um, one essay answering an application question, um, contact information for one professional or academic reference, and obviously your official transcripts from all previously attended undergraduate and graduate institutions. So this also applies for uh, paper transcripts that get, get, that get mailed out and e-scripts as well. Um, admissions interview, if applicable, and um, there is a GRE and GMAT. However, uh, we are pleased to announce that we currently are waiving the GRE and the GMAT. Next slide, please. So um, I know Lindsay already touched on this earlier, but I really want to reiterate this statement. So to succeed in an increasingly global landscape, healthcare needs leaders who can nurture international relationships, diversify their supply chain and business practices and develop innovative solutions for contemporary healthcare needs. So really folks, this really is your opportunity to become a global leader. Next slide, please. So here is the start date for our next cohort group, which is August 19th. Um, you may think that's far off, but really it's, it's just around the corner and the application deadline is August 1st. So really feel free to reach out to me as soon as possible and, and we can get the ball rolling. Um, I, both Lindsay and I, and as well as Alicia are here to help you out. Uh, and there is also an early bird discount if you apply before June 4th. And that really is around the corner. So um, if we can just jump to the next slide. All right. So um, again, speak with your advisor. That would be the three ladies, Alicia, Lindsay, and I. Um, here's my contact information. Feel free to, to give me a call, drop me an email, um, send me a text. And I will certainly reach out to you um, and, and, and help you out with the application process. Again, just don't delay it. The more you delay the start date, the more stressed out you're going to be. So uh, reach out to us and, and we'll get the ball rolling. Next slide. Thank you so much again for all who joined and participated in this, in this webinar. If anyone has any questions for Alicia, Lindsay, Adriana, or I, uh, regarding the admissions, student experience, or program information, please feel free um, to pop your questions um, in, in the chat box, and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Lindsay, do you want to jump in? Yes, so there's a couple here. Um, uh, the first one is actually directed at Adriana, so Adriana, I'll put you back in the hot seat for a second. Um, this person said, do you find that your colleagues wonder what an MGM is 
or are people in your organization familiar with this degree? Uh, they are not familiar with this degree. In fact, my uh, uh, direct leader often refers to my MBA program. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, you know, go with it. But, um, you know, the folks that do ask me about it, I, you know, when I give them the information, they always are like, very intrigued. Um, I've referred a number of people to Lindsay and Alicia to get more information, because it's, it's a really cool program. So uh, it's just not, it's not widely known, especially from the healthcare services perspective, right? I'm in the initial cohort. So um, that, that clearly there is no precedence there. Awesome. Thank you. Um, another one, I think, Alicia, this probably will be directed at you. Um, about how long does it take for a completed application to then become accepted? All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Um, so from the time that you submit your application until the time that you're admitted, it can take up to two weeks, um, depending on how long it goes through the system. I mean, uh, one of the biggest um, barriers that I find initially is the letter of recommendation. Um, sometimes we have to help push them along to submit it um, because I can't push your application forward until your recommender actually submits their form. So, um, and, and I'm really great at like, I check on it pretty much daily and will email you and let you know, hey, can you reach out to them because it's been about four or five days now. And, um, but that's often the one, the part that can delay the, the admission process. But I'm always working on other parts of it on the backside so that it can be expedited once we get that recommendation in. Agreed. You want to keep Alicia on your side because she can work wonders. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, another question is, um, how do the office hours work? Sure. So um, all the faculty, this is something that's, um, I'm so glad you brought it up or that someone asked about it is because um, this is something that's truly unique to this online program. You normally don't have, normally typically in an online program, you don't ever see the faculty or your peers face-to-face -face in any sort of capacity. But um, for this program, for all the Thunderbird classes, the faculty have implemented a weekly office hour, which is um, about five or six o'clock, so depending on the time and um, what the cohort generally agrees to in the beginning of the semester. But it's one hour a week um, where you have the opportunity to talk with your professor about that week's learnings. So you can run, bounce ideas off of your cohort um, or off of your other um, uh, peers. And it's just a great way to really connect with your other classmates because you see them in discussion posts, but this really gets you that face-to-face, -face, <clears throat> excuse me, interaction. Um, and Adriana might be able to speak even a little bit more about that for her experience in the um, office hours. Yeah, so um, I, as I mentioned, my, my schedule is pretty demanding. And so um, fortunately for me, the office hours are not mandatory, so, um, but they're always recorded. So I try to join as much as possible, but if not, I can always catch up. Um, and then uh, generally the, the um, teacher will take some notes and then share the notes in the, um, in the group chat. So um, I know some of my peers join every single one and, and you know, there's time zone challenges and things like that. But, um, you know, if you have specific uh, questions, they're happy to answer for you. Um, in fact, sometimes when, when you are communicating through the um, discussion forums, you know, some of the teachers will uh, go out and say, hey, that's a great topic for our um, uh, office hours this week. And, you know, you can put, sort of be a guest speaker there. So it's, it's great. Um, and uh, as, as an additional uh, tool for the train for the course. Awesome. Thank you. So this last one, it's not a question. It's more of a statement. So I'll just read it. It says, thanks Adriana for talking about work-life balance. That's something that I was curious about since I'm a busy mom who works full-time as well. So I think that speaks for itself. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's it for um, questions um, right now from, from my end. All right.
perfect. Um, that's it for questions over here as well. Alicia, did you want to wrap it up? Sure. Um, so once again, thanks so much for joining us. Um, again, you can always email uh, Lena if you have any questions at all and she can help get that ball rolling. Um, Lena, if you want to post your email in the chat box for all the participants so they can quickly copy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Um, if anything, I will reach out to um, the participants individually and um, find out if they have specific questions and, and we can always uh, converse at that time and, and, and take it from there. Great. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and we will look forward to talking with you again soon. Thanks for having thank me. You. And goodbye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.